So recently Borderlands 3 came out and I got inspired by their loot crate system where you can kind of open up crates and get weapons inside and I thought about how cool it would be to kind of create that in Unity and to see if I could do that using GameDevHQ's revolutionary plugin Filebase. So let's check it out in this week's Filebase breakdown. To get started, you need to download the Filebase plugin. In Filebase, there's over 1,000 game-ready assets that are available for us to use in our personal and commercial projects. So to get started with this, I wanted to see if I could find any sci-fi elements that resemble what I'm seeing in Borderlands. And to my surprise, there was a locker that we can basically open and we can store some cash on top and maybe a rifle on the bottom. So I like this. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And after downloading it, it's automatically going to be asset managed. And as soon as it's imported here, I can hit this locate button and it's going to give me the location of that asset. So in my scene view here, what I can do is I'm just going to go into the sci-fi locker. I'm going to drag it in. So here is our locker. I'm just going to lower it to the ground and I'm going to rotate it by about 180 degrees. Now inside the sci-fi locker, we have a cube 019 and I can rotate this to open it. So for example, if I set it to a negative 90, the door opens. So the first thing I need to do is I need to animate this. So to animate it with the object selected that I want to animate, I can go to window animation and select the animation window. This is going to allow me to keyframe this animation. I can create a new clip while the object is selected and we're going to call this open sci-fi locker. So that's going to create a new open sci-fi locker animation and we should create an animation folder to store this in. So we'll create an animations and we'll go ahead and place those in there. All right, with that created, the next thing I want to do is with the object selected, I'm going to hop into record mode here and I need to keyframe the animation. Now, a neat trick you can do here is if I open up the panel, if I take this white slider here and move it to the fifth frame, and animate it to the end position, such as negative 90, it's automatically going to key the starting position for me. And I'm just gonna open it up like this. Now, if I stop playing and hit the playback here, you'll see here it's just flipping super fast. I'm gonna change the samples to about five. And you'll see here now that we, nice have, we now have a smooth open door. Now, one of the problems here by default, I'm just gonna save the game scene, um, here is that Unity by default is going to loop the animation. If I play the game, it's just going to open its door continuously for us. And that's fine, but it's not what I want. So if I click on the animation, by default it has loop time checked. Just uncheck that and you'll be okay. Now when I run it, it's just going to open and it's going to hold on the fifth frame. But now what I want to do is I want to create the ability to walk up to it and trigger the animation. So we need to actually look at that object. And you'll see here it added what's called an animator component. The animator component holds animations that are attached to that object. If I double click the controller slot, it's gonna take me to the animator view. And you'll see here that as soon as I start, it's going to play the open sci-fi locker. What I need to do is I need to create a resting or null state where it's just gonna sit and wait for instructions. So I'm gonna right click create and go to empty. And I'm gonna rename this to resting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click that and set layer as the default state. I'm going to right click that and make a transition to the open animation. If I run this now, you'll see here that our animation is going to sit in resting and our door isn't going to open or it's going to go to the transition until I tell it to. So what we need to do is we need to now create a parameter. When do we go to the open animation? When our player triggers it. So I'm going to create a parameter of type trigger and we're going to call it open. On the transition we created, we can add a condition for open. I'm going to remove has exit time so that it doesn't have to wait for the resting loop. I can remove the fixed duration and set the transition duration to zero because we don't require any blending. I'm going to play this and you'll see here that we're going to be stuck in the resting state until I trigger the open state. When I trigger the open, we go straight to the open and now we're opened. So everything there is working great. The next part here is I'm going to open up these doors and let's talk about the assets that I can put inside of here. So on the cube, I'm just going to set to 90. And what I want to do here is we have a top shelf and a bottom shelf. I'm thinking let's put some cash on the top and let's put maybe a rifle on the bottom. So to easily do this, I'm going to go back to file base and let's search for the cash options that are available to us. So once file base opens up here, I'm going to search for money. 
And you'll see here that we have gold bars, gold bars, gold bars, and we got a couple ATMs and some bags, and then we have some dollar bills. So let's check these guys out. And I think I'm actually okay with this. So I'm gonna take the download here. We'll log in again to authenticate. And we'll download the dollar bills. Now, once that's imported into my project, I can simply go to my download system here, my download manager, and I can locate the dollar bills as well as locate my sci-fi locker. So with the locating uh, the dollar bills, you can see here that we have three build prefabs. Now, what I wanna do here is I'm probably gonna use this third one, which is a bulk stack of money, and I wanna place it on the top shelf. Now, if I had to guess, I don't believe Borderlands is preloading assets into these um, crates when you open them. What I believe happens is there is a loot table that at runtime is being pulled from and it instantiates objects when the player opens the crate to determine the type of weapons and loot that is available to you. So we can create a similar system. By doing that, we need to have a holder position in here where we want to instantiate some money. So to do that, I'm gonna create an empty object within this. We're gonna create an empty object and we're gonna call this bottom shelf. So the bottom shelf here, we're gonna drag it up, bring it a little forward. And the next thing I wanna do is add some money to it. So the bottom shelf is there, here's my money. And you can see here the money is super big. So let's set it to about 0 0.25. All right, and that looks pretty good. The next thing I wanna do here is I don't wanna adjust the bill position, I wanna adjust the bottom shelf because I'm gonna spawn an object at that position. So what I wanna do here is I'm just going to shift it back and that looks pretty good. I'd say that's pretty well flat on there. And let's make sure, all right, good deal. So I'm happy with that position and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this bills 03, we're gonna call it money prefab. I'm gonna prefab that into my prefabs folder. So I'll create a new folder, call it prefabs. And we'll drag that in. Now that that's there, what I can do is I can go to the money prefab and delete it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to duplicate the bottom shelf and we're gonna call this top shelf. And now let's go and find a rifle that we can put in the bottom here. So to do that, we'll open up file base and let's search for a gun. And you'll see here that we have several types of guns. And let's look for a rifle. We got an M60, an M4. Let's see if we got like an AK maybe. Uh, we do. Here's an AK-47. Let's go ahead and download that. And with that imported, what I'm going to do is go to my file manager to quickly find it. So give it a minute to import those textures. And I'm going to go over to here and I can locate that. And then I'm going to drag that into the top shelf slot. So here is my FBX top shelf. All right. What I can do now is let's go ahead here and position this where it needs to be. So obviously it's too big right now, so we're gonna set the scale of whatever gets spawned here to say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and that's obviously too small. So 0 0.5, and that might be okay. And then let's go ahead and rotate this on the Z, and let's just lean it up in this cabinet basically. So here when you walk into it and it opens up, you're gonna have an AK-47 right there. And that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just prefab the AK-47 because we, we'll, we'll inst uh, instantiate it at runtime. So I turn it into a prefab and what we can do now is let's actually go ahead here. I'm just going to keep the AK there. I'm going to set the door back to zero and let's just run this and see how it actually looks. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to bring in a character controller and configure it so that when I hit the E key, we open this door and we can collect the loot. So here we have our animation. Right now we're just sitting and resting. I'm gonna trigger the open and there's an AK-47. Good deal. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna delete the AK-47 now. And the next step here is let's go ahead and open this when I walk up to it. So we have tutorials on creating a character controller from scratch, but to save some time, we also got into extensions with FileBase. So we created um, modular and dynamic efficient components that are plug and play. So if we go to all assets, and we go to our extensions, you can see here we have a first person character controller that we created and we can download this and import it directly into our project. 
And once that imports, I'll show you how this character controller works. It's a very simple script that basically allows us to do everything the Unity Standard Asset Character Controller does in one script that's neatly written and highly optimized. So one of the things you'll be able to see here is if we go to our file manager, let's locate that. And inside here, we have a GDHQ FPS controller. If we open the prefab to the dev look view, you'll see here that it's just an FPS controller script with controller info, such as your walk and run, your gravity, if you're crouching, we have head bob settings, and then we also have camera look sensitivity. To use this plugin, I simply drag it into my scene. I need to get out of the look dev. I drag it into my scene, just like right here if I want. And then I just remove the main camera because it already has one. So what I'm gonna do now is I just run the game and we will have a functioning smooth first person character controller. So what I can do now is I can run around, I can move around, and I basically want to be able to move up to this and let's hit the E key to open it. So to do that, I need to know when I'm in front of it. There's a few ways you can go about doing that. You can use ray casting to detect the safe in front of you, or we can actually just create a collider that stands in front of this guy that says, hey, you can interact with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's take the sci-fi locker and let's add a box collider component. Here we have a box collider and I'm just gonna bring out the center position on the Z basically. So maybe the size of it, just like that. And then here we'll bring it forward. And basically as long as you are in front of it and colliding in that zone, we can communicate with that object. So let's now set it to a trigger so that I can actually walk into it. And if I run this, we can now detect events when I go inside and here we go. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to basically check for the E key while I'm colliding there. So the safe is gonna have a script attached checking for collision events. Now, in order for this to work, one of the objects has to have a rigid body for collisions to work. And if we look on our character controller here, we do not have one. And our safe, our locker here does not have one. So because this guy is gonna be checking for the collisions, let's add it to the safe. Here you have use gravity, we can set to false, and then we can even make this kinematic so that forces aren't applied to this object. We just need the rigid body. Okay, let's create a safe now to open. So we're gonna call this loot crate. So we'll create a scripts folder. And we're gonna call this loot crate. And then on the assets here, we're gonna create a new folder for our scripts and we'll put that in there. All right, so with that loot script or that loot crate script created, I'm gonna select my sci-fi locker and I'm simply just going to go into the loot crate and drag that script on. And you'll see here that it's giving me an issue with attaching that. Okay, here we go, good deal. All right, so we have our loot crate there. Let's open this script up in Visual Studio and let's begin writing the logic to detect the player. So for starters, when we, what is the script going to do? This script is going to open the door animation, check for user input pressing the E key, right? When it's colliding. So when colliding. So here's the goal that we need to achieve. The first part here is check for the user inputting the E key. Let's check to see if the player even wants to open this door. To do that, we use something called on trigger enter. Right, on trigger enter is gonna tell us, hey, the player is in your zone, and then you can basically use logic to check for input. Alternatively, we could use on trigger stay. Now on trigger stay for user input works, it's just not as accurate as I'd like it to be. So there are ways you can do this, and it's important to know that there's multiple ways to solve this problem. But let's, for the sake of time, we'll use the on trigger stay approach. The object that collides with us is stored in other, and I need to check if other is equal to the player. So if other is equal to player, then what happens? Then I can check for input. So let's go ahead here and we'll simply create our if statement, checking for um, user input and checking for the player. So to do this, we'll create our if statement and I'm just gonna check to see if other.tag matches the player. And if it does, what happens? We can check for user input. So here, if, um, if E key, then what do I wanna do? We need to trigger open door animation. So that's pretty simple. We'll create an if statement to check for the E key. So here we have our input and we'll use get key down because I'm looking for the E key and specify the key code E. 
And once I press that and it's the player pressing it, what are we looking to do? I need to now trigger that animation, which is attached within this animator component. I need a reference to that animator component. So we have to create a reference to that and cache it. So here we're going to have void start. And above that, we need a variable here to store the handle. We need to get a handle onto the animator. So here we have a handle to animator components. And the first thing we need to do here, just going to bring that back. Um, the first thing we can do here is create a private handle of type animator and we'll call it underscore anim. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to in void start assign the handle to the component. So here I take the anim and I'm going to assign it to get component and the component I'm looking for on this object is the animator. Script communication is one of the most important topics to understand in Unity and we have a ton of content inside the Unity C Sharp Survival Guide um, that will help you with that as well as tutorials on this channel. So here we have anim.getComponentAnimator. And then what I want to do now is it's always good to null check. So here you just simply say if anim is not equal to null or equals null. So if anim equals null, we can know ahead of time or we can actually null check when we use it. Both options are valid. So we'll use it here. I have to trigger the open door animation now. To do that, before I access the animation, I need to check if it's null. So here, if anim is not null, then we're cleared to go. If anim is not equal to null, then I want to basically access the anim and then there's a set trigger property. And if I read the tooltip, it's asking me for a string name. So here, what's the name of the trigger? Open. We are going to trigger the open animation attached to that animator when the player hits the E key. We can save this, hop back into Unity and test this out. We need to make sure that our player is actually tagged as player. So if we go here, you can see here it's currently untagged. Let's tag it as player and let's go and walk into the door. So there's no logs right now telling us anything, but if I hit the E key, it opens up the door and we can go ahead and actually spawn some chest. All right, so let's go ahead and spawn loot. To do this, what we want to do is we basically want to spawn our prefabs into the bottom shelf and top shelf spots. The easiest way for us to do that is to know about those spots. So in this script here, if I'm the loot crate here, I need to know, hey, I have a game object that I want to spawn into. I have a game object for my top shelf. So I have a game object for my top shelf. And then I also have a game object for my bottom shelf. And I'm going to use these to spawn into those objects. Now, because they're private, I can't see them in the inspector. So we're going to add a serialized field attribute. And that's going to allow us to see this data in the inspector and I can drag those objects. So on the sci-fi locker here, you'll see we have a bottom shelf and a top shelf and I can just simply drag them in. We now have a reference to those objects. By saving our script, we're good to go. And now what I need to do is I need to say, hey, okay, we open the door. Before we actually open the door, let's instantiate some loot. So in order to instantiate loot, our program has to know what are you looking to instantiate. Now in Borderlands, I'm sure they have a very dynamic and broad um, loot crate system. So for sake of timing, we're going to store whatever they're going to get here. Um, and we'll say here, private game object. And we'll say, let's create an array of loot maybe. And we'll just have it be zero is going to be top shelf and one is going to be bottom. And it's just going to be two assets that we're spawning. But you could definitely make this to where if you wanted to, you could say private game object array of top and bottom. And you can you could extend this um, pretty greatly. So to make this easy, though, we're going to say game object here. We have an array and then let's call this loot. So what I want to do is I want to serialize this and then we can actually add game objects that we want to instantiate now. And we can even call this available loot. So available loot. All right, and then we know for the fact that it's going to be a length of two. So we have a top shelf item and a bottom shelf item. So here's our available loot. And I'm going to go to my prefabs, drag the AK-47 into the bottom, money prefab on top. All right, save our scene, open up our script. And what we need to do now is we need to instantiate loot. So how do I go about instantiating the loot of each type into the spots? Well, we have the top shelf. So let's focus on that first. Top shelf equals money. 
So I'm simply going to say the instantiate keyword and I'm going to grab the available loot. I'm going to say, hey, available loot. Um, and then the position to spawn it. The position to spawn it is going to be what? And you'll see here we have 10 options. The position to spawn it is going to be um, the parent position. So that parent position is going to be top shelf dot transform dot position. And the quaternion rotation is going to be nothing. It's going to take whatever the parent is. It's just going to be nothing. Um, and then the transform parent. So that's a new option. And I want the parent to be the top shelf dot transform. So that should instantiate this guy within the top shelf. And you'll see here that we're getting an error because it's an array. So zero is going to be the top, one is the bottom. If I save this and test it out, we should see that there's a stack of money in the top shelf. Let's check it out. Hit the E key. All right, and you'll see there that we have money floating right there. So what I want to do is I'm going to pause this and let's take a look at why that happened. How did it get spawned here? Well, what probably happened here is that it got spawned into top shelf versus we wanted it to get spawned. Here's the top shelf. And you can see here that the bottom shelf, it looks like they might be reversed. Top shelf is there. Bottom shelf is here. So it looks like I had it reversed. So let me go ahead and quickly swap these. So I'm just going to rename this one to top shelf. And we'll rename this one to bottom shelf. All right, with the bottom shelf here selected, all right, we should be good to go. I want to make sure that our loot is stacked properly. So we have our money prefab on the top and AK on the bottom. And then here we have these switched top shelf, bottom. All right, let's save that. Make sure all this looks good. We should be able to rerun this and we should see money on top. And we do. There's money on top and we can do the exact same thing now for the rifle. So here we'll go and skip down. We can copy that. All right, and we're simply going to adjust this to be a one. This is going to be bottom shelf. And then the parent is going to be bottom shelf. If we save this, go back into Unity, we now have a functioning loot system. And there we go. So obviously there's some things we can adjust here, such as getting the rotation of that gun to be upwards. Um, but that's not that terribly of a big deal. We're also at the 22 minute mark here. So thank you so much guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely check out gamedevhq.com and I'll see you guys later.